was about uh, yeah December twenty third. We went there because my father, father was here. My father was like my father in was here. And his birthday was twenty third of December. And uh, December twenty four was uh, Sister Sol's uh, birthday, right? And then we went to Dennis at maybe um, eleven. 11, about 11.30, but 11.50, 11.30. So it was still my my, my father's my father in law's birthday. And then we were there, and then, and then uh, we say happy birthday, happy birthday to you, girl. All right, thank you very much. And then it, uh, uh, it 12, two, oh, it's birthday, it's, it's his son's birthday. So we, we say another uh, happy birthday, this time of his son's soul. So the two birthdays in one sitting. Then, uh, <laughs> And then I noticed that in the corner, in the corner were uh, guys who were uh, maybe it was six, seven of, of them, and some of uh, some still uh, coming in, and they were having Bible study. It was one o'clock in the morning, and uh, yeah, they they, uh, they ordered their food, and uh, while well, they were uh, singing uh, softly, and they were praying, and they were having their Bible study, they were eating. Well, it was a house church. Actually, that was a that was the uh, uh, that was the situation in the first century. There was no church. There was a church building. There's no uh, uh, the church was just, uh, was still starting, and so they don't have building of their own. They don't have facilities of their own. So what they did was, if there was a member who had uh, a large house, especially uh, um, most of them are. Uh, or, uh, you know, uh, or maybe they have been rented, inherited big estates, then they did a house church there. So, in a house church, they eat, okay? uh, but they don't play well. <laughs> they, don't, they don't play Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs>
Christians in Corinth because they have, uh, although they have such, uh, um, they, they possess a lot of spiritual gifts, and yet uh, the Apostle Paul is telling them that they are spiritually immature. Now, if they have lots of spiritual gifts, yet they are not spiritually mature, how can believers like us grow spiritually? What else do they need, or what else do we need to grow is spiritual? Today what we're going to find out uh, is that there is a more excellent way than just having spiritual gifts. Come on, you can eat, come on. It's a house church. Alright. Today we are going to survey one of the greatest chapters in the book of uh, uh, 1 Corinthians and one of the most beloved uh, chapters in the entire Bible. It, it, it is 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and we scholars call it the love chapter. This chapter is read in many weddings and maybe in, in, in your wedding uh, no, in your wedding, uh, Carlo, in your wedding. You know what? First Corinthians 13 will be read. Maybe on the old chapter or some of it. And if I'm not mistaken, it was also read during the wedding of Prince uh, Charles. Okay. And uh, Lady Di. Okay. Uh, Carlo, okay. if you read this. Uh, First Corinthians 13, in your wedding, you'll be one of those, uh, you'll be in line with the uh, Jesus died in uh, Prince Charles. Now this one is, you'll be Giancarlo. <laughs> you'll say more. <laughs> Alright, okay, okay, okay. Now, if there are passages in the Bible, uh, the people memorize what are those? The passages, the whole chapter. Psalms 23, right. And then another one is 1 Corinthians 13. I myself, when I was a teenager, I memorized this in the Revised Standard Version, and it was good. It is my recommendation that if you uh, want to memorize a whole chapter, memorize uh, Psalms 23 and, okay, uh, and 1 Corinthians 13. And if you want, if you're going to be challenged, try uh, Psalms 150. It's the longest chapter in the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> well, 1 Corinthians 13 is also a um, uh, most misused passages in the Bible. Why? Because as I said, couples um, uh, use this in their weddings as a, as a text for their uh, wonderful marital union. Yet, the Apostle Paul penned this, uh, this chapter to castigate because he was angry to, uh, to the members of the Christians in Corinth because of their erroneous habits. Their actions, their actions are causing division within the church. So now Paul, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, wrote this magnificent description of love to teach them how to behave. Actually, Paul looked at Jesus and then wrote a description of love. What's happening in the church? The church at Corinth is in a mess. As I told you, they have such, uh, they, they, they possess a lot of supernatural abilities, but they do not know how to use them the way God intends them to do. As a review in, in 1 Corinthians 12, uh, the earlier chapter, we listed these spiritual gifts as follows. The gift of wisdom, knowledge, faith, healing, a miraculous powers, prophecy, distinguishing between spirits, speaking in different kinds of tongues, and interpretation of tongues. These are some, and I believe there's more, uh, these are some of the... Uh, uh, spiritual gifts that the uh, Christians in Corinth have. Just imagine if we have this kind of spiritual gifts here, right now. Oh, this will be a tremendous 
tremendous cheers. But the problem is, hmm, there's a problem. The problem is there's a problem. What was all, uh, Paul is saying? Now, if we read this chapter, but we'll, before we do that, what's happening again? What's happening with the within the church? Okay, I, I told you that uh, house church, right? Uh, and I also told you that uh, there was no uh, church building uh, at that time. So I can imagine that. Uh, Let's say this, uh, this this Christian has a large house, and he or she would uh, will, uh, would allow would let his house to be used for a, as an assembly. And um, but again, there was chaos among the uh, members of uh, of the church among the Christians. And uh, I was imagining when I was uh, taking uh, First Corinthians. Uh, course in the seminary and we were all imagining what's happening there and uh, we were imagining that in this large house people will be coming and they will be coming in and many of these uh, rich the elite members of the society will come and because uh, you know <laughs> because they are well dressed they're rich they tend to mix together and they would uh, we are imagining that they, they would occupy the most ordered plot, uh, part of the house, uh, a little bit elevated, so that people would see them talking and uh, brandishing their, uh, their jewelry, their nice clothes, and their, uh, uh, their beautiful uh, tone, uh, elegant languages. Uh, and then uh, other people will be coming, those... Uh, uh, those who love Paul will be will be in this group, will be in the side. Those who love Peter will be on that side. Those who love uh, will say, "Ha! Oh, we are Jesus, nothing else." They will be on that side, and everyone was using their spiritual their spiritual gifts. Those who have uh, spiritual uh, uh, gifts of healing would uh, would bring sick people inside, and then they in the name of Jesus. They would perform their miracles, uh, and then those people with eloquent, uh, eloquent uh, uh, speeches, those who are given this uh, the gift of wisdom, the, they would uh, they would preach, and one after the other, maybe all together. So you can hear chaos inside the assembly hall, and then uh, uh, maybe those people with uh, 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 gifts of prophecy. With, the, with, the, with God people, maybe you will invite people to, you know, I can see, I can see that you will be, uh, you will be a successful person. <laughs> so, a spiritual force. And the women with the speaking tongues, with the um, gifts of the speaking tongues, with the, with the, um, suddenly burst into scripture. <laughs> without even interpreting, without even people who can interpret the uh, their, their language. Uh, then after the they would turn to each other and then they would, they would quarrel. They would say, you are like this, you are like this, and then there would be God if no, what would happen. People would carry their grudges as they uh, as they leave the place. The weak and the most vulnerable, vulnerable members of the church would leave the house even more fragile. The wealthy and the mighty members of the assembly will leave the house boastfully, boastful and still uh, arrogant and rude. Those members who are very opinionated will leave the house shares and still insisting that they are right and all the rest were wrong. The low esteemed members of the church will still be hurting by the accusations of the other members of the church or the gossip that they heard. Because, because they were hurting, and because uh, there's no love in them, they will leave the church. They will leave. They will leave the assembly, 
uh, with uh, with grudges and with long list of the wrong things that, that member of this member have done. And many members would leave the assembly divided instead of being built up, discouraged instead of being inspired, depressed instead of being at peace. And in this situation, the Apostle Paul, inspired by the Holy Spirit, continued to write his supply to the letter sent to him by the truly concerned members of the church. And then the first Corinthians 13. Was the result of that response. So all in all, the Corinthian believers possess amazing arsenal of spiritual powers. The Holy Spirit gave them spiritual gifts that they may use to build up the church. God also gave them spiritual power of or an astonishing as abilities to demonstrate to the people of Corinth that God is greater than all the gods and goddesses of the Roman pantheon or Roman religion. And the Christian lifestyle is superb than the lifestyle of the ancient Greeks, no matter how glorious they say it was. You know the song, The Glory, the glory That Was Wrong? They said that the lifestyle of the Romans were the highest quality lifestyle. But God was saying, because of the spiritual gifts and special abilities that God, the Holy Spirit, has given to the uh, Corinthian churches, a Corinthian church, God is saying, Christian lifestyle is better than the lifestyle of the world. Do you believe that? You know what I believe? I believe that the Christian lifestyle is the happiest lifestyle. Do you believe that? I strongly believe it. Now, many of you, maybe you have, you have the, the same experience that, uh, that I had. Uh, been to Saudi Arabia and uh, I had a great, I had a great uh, job there and making money. And uh, you know what? I can, I can live a, uh, I can live a high class life, but and without a life without Christ. But I chose to live a life with Christ. No matter how the persecution that awaits me in uh, in Saudi Arabia, but why? Because I believe that Christian lifestyle is the best lifestyle. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. It is Christ who gives the kind of a lifestyle. Now, what Paul is saying here? Paul is saying that great uh, that uh, that uh, love is greater than the gift of tongues. He's saying that there's a, there's a more excellent way, and the, the, this, more ex, this uh, more excellent way is the way of love. Let, let me tell you a little bit. Let me tell you uh, right now that love is not just emotion. You know that. You know that. Love is not an emotion. It's not just emotion. Yes, emotion is part of it, but it's not just emotion. Right now, uh, and you know also that the word love has been used and misused. By many people. Oh, I love your hairstyle. I love my hairstyle, you know. <laughs> I love the important. Oh, I love the important. Ah, right. I love donuts. Oh, see, I love the More than words, love is more than emotion. More, 
It's an action. It's a commitment. It's a character. It's a character. And Paul was saying that love is greater than the gift of tongue, is greater than the gift of prophecy, is greater than the gift of wisdom, the gift, gift of faith, greater than the gift of martyrdom. Now, Paul is saying in effect, as if he's saying that you Christians may be speaking with eloquence of men and of angels, but if you do not have love, you just become no more than a blaring gong or a clanging symbol. You know, this gong and clanging and symbols were some of the instruments the pagan uh, Corinthians used in the temple worship, in their processions, and, when, and, and they sounded weird to those who did not appreciate it. Now, Paul seems to be saying that you Christians may be fascinating people with your ability to foretell the future. Or you may be preaching marvelous expository sermons that seem to contain the very secrets of God. Or you may have tremendous faith that you can move mountains. But if you do not have love, you amount to nothing at all. Or you may be sacrificing. You may have the gift of martyrdom so that you are willing to go to arena to face the, the lions, the tigers, the birds, the wild dogs, and even the flying spears and the sharp swords of the gladiators. Or you may be willing to be tied a pole and be burned alive, but if you do not have love, you gain nothing, and your sacrifices are in vain. You achieve precisely nothing. And then Paul enumerates the characteristic of divine inspired love. In a short passage, he swiftly penned 15 great characteristics of love. Love is patient. Love is not jealous. Love is not boastful. Love is not proud. Love is not true. Love is not in its own way. Love is not irritable. Love gives no record of being wrong. Love does not rejoice about injustice. Love rejoices whenever truth wins out. Love never gives up. Love never loses faith. Love is always hopeful. Love endures in every circumstance. Wow. In a very short passage, 15 characteristics of love. You see, you may have the amazing ability to teach and your teaching is without a doubt astounding. But if you do not have the patience to wait for your turn, and you insist that your own way without considering others' friend, that is not a more excellent way. Now love is greater than other virtues. As I said, faith and hope are great, but love is the greatest. So these three, Faith, hope, and love abide. This, but the greatest of these is love. So love is greater than all spiritual gifts. One day all gifts, all abilities that we all have, no matter how special or how tantalizing they may be, they will all pass away, but love will remain. Friends, if you're envious that your brother are so good at doing this or doing that, Maybe you're so envious that the Harry is so good in, in guitar. Ah, you know what? Please don't. It's not love. Because love is not envious or jealous. If you are impatient with this or that brother because he is a weakling, please don't. Because love is patient and kind. No. Many of us are guilty of this. We become impatient with other members of the church. Why are you like this? I, I, I don't like it. So slow. We're so impatient. Friends, it's not love. Because love is not... Oh, and love is patient and love is kind. If you are always angry with that brother or sister because he or she will not do what you want, uh, please don't. 
Why? Because it is not love. Because love does not insist on its own way. If you think that things can can be better because when you are because you are around and you like to hear other people say, Oh, I'm so glad that you are here. Now we're good. Please turn your ears off. Or direct your attention to the strength of others. Why? Because love is not arrogant. Love is not boastful. But instead, ask God to teach you to love. Ask God for more of His love because true love comes from God alone. Now let's put things in proper places. What does it mean? Does it mean that um, we should forget about spiritual gifts and concentrate on love? Okay, Pastor, you're saying that oh, love is better than spiritual gift. Are you saying, Pastor, that okay, let us forget about the spiritual gift and concentrate on love? No, that, that's not what uh, the Bible is trying to uh, say. We still need spiritual gifts to build up the body of Christ. We, hey, you and I are still weak in our faith. We have to strengthen one another and we use and we have to use spiritual gifts for that. We need spiritual gifts as we face the ever-growing power of wickedness around us. Because the day of Christ is coming and it's getting nearer and nearer. And while the coming of Christ is getting nearer and nearer, the forces of evil are ever increasing in their presence in the world. Because the demons and satans, this will be their last hurrah on earth. Recently, you, you read in the paper and you saw in the, the TV the many deaths have been happening in the world. 256 people died in the coup in Turkey. 84 people died when this crazy uh, person ran people during the Basel day with uh, I think was 18 wheelers. Uh, the people were just flying and body parts were just flying. We are not, we should not let these things happen. And we might need spiritual gifts to convince people that this is not the way to do it. The church must fight back. We have to snatch as many people as we can because Satan and his horde uh, of demons are raking millions and millions into their territory. People are killing people. And these are the works of Satan. Jesus loves his people. He died for them. Jesus doesn't want his people to be taken to hell. And it is our job to snatch them away from the hands of the evil ones. And this can not be done alone by human strength. We need the power of the blood of the Lamb. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. We need the spiritual gifts to convince people that there is a better way. And in fact, the only way to be saved. And that is the name of Jesus Christ. Friends, there's only one name under heaven given to people whereby they may be saved and that name is Jesus. the name of Jesus. the name is Jesus. yes one day every knee will bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord that they will come with your brothers and sisters unfortunately there will be people who would realize that Jesus is Lord and yet they are in hell there will be people we realize that they have already realized that long ago and they will be praising God because they are in heaven now we are given a choice we are given a choice if you have loved ones where do you want them to realize that Jesus is Lord when they are in hell or when they are in heaven or where do you want them where do you want them to go down 
this is a time when we have to bring them the good news. Sometimes you need spiritual gifts, but more so, you have to have the love of God for all the time. Because if you have the love of God, when you look at them and they don't have Christ, you will look at them as a person who goes to hell and you don't like that. You are going to do everything that you can so that that person would have the saving knowledge of God. Give them the opportunity to know Jesus Christ. Pull them, push them, drag them, no matter what. Because you love them. You love them. You love them to know Jesus Christ. You love them enough to care for them. Being a witness to Christ is not easy. Many times we need spiritual gifts to demonstrate to some people that we have the authentic message. Sometimes some people believe that uh, sometimes people would only believe if they see supernatural things. One time we were called to this, uh, to this house. Oh, uh, my, uh, my daughter is having this. Uh, it was bewitched. It was, uh, she was... Uh, she had this. Uh, she has disease for two years. Uh, she uh, she been to hospitals, doctors, and there are many laboratory uh, laboratory, laboratory examination tests uh, taken, but nothing happened. We were told that uh, she was. Uh, what call it? Kula. Uh, she was cursed and uh, more than cursed, right? Uh, yeah. What's that in English? Kulam? Bewitch. Bewitch. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> alright. Bewitch. Okay. Um, uh, this, uh, there's somebody who was, uh, was, who was so angry with her and uh, uh, she went to this witch and, uh, and this witch gave her some, uh, something that we would she would scratch uh, her thing and she, she was a nurse and uh, she has uh, a lot of uh, friend doctors and she would go to their friend, friend's doctor because it was so itchy and, uh, and she was given a lot of medications and nothing happened for two years. And there were times that it's so itchy that in front of, um, of uh, her patients she would scratch. He doesn't care whether it's embarrassing, but uh, she was telling because it was so itchy. So uh, we got this call, and uh, brother brother Dennis and I went to the went to the house, and um, she let us in. You know, we we look at the face, and I I look at the face, and uh, it was a face that said, "Okay, come in and pray for me, and then go home." <laughs> the face like that, you know, and, uh, and then. It was not a warm welcome actually. We felt that. That's fine. We were, we were asked to be there and then so, so we went there. And at least there's somebody who has faith in us or was faith in the God uh, to whom we trust. In whom we trust, should I say. And then we presented the gospel. We presented to her the gospel and then uh, and then she accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. Maybe, oh, okay, I'm so good to accept Jesus Christ. You know, when people are desperate, they would accept everything, right? So we, she accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, and then, and then I uh, took out my oil, and then I told, I told her, this is oil, this is, but it's not about oil, but it's oil. They, they trust the faith in the one who instructed us to use this oil. Do you believe that? Yes. So, in very simple prayer, in the name of Jesus Christ, be here. After that, yeah, she became warm with us. Uh, so it's so okay. After after a week, a call, we got a call. She's getting better. Second week, the itchiness was gone. 
she believed in the Lord Jesus Christ the more, and many members of the family uh, uh, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, there are some people who would believe in the Lord Jesus Christ when they see miracles happen. And that is the role of the spiritual gifts. Some people are like still like that. But you know what? You know what? It doesn't mean that you have spiritual gifts. You are mature. There is a better way. There is a more excellent way. Love is greater than spiritual gifts. Love is greater than... Uh, love has great characteristics. Love is greater in utility and longevity. Love is greater than all virtues. So which one is better? Is spiritual gifts or love? I would say both are good. And they become better when used in a godly way. This is what I can say. You desire to have spiritual gifts, but love is a more excellent way. So desire love, God's love, and use your spiritual gifts. Amen? Okay? Desire love, God's love, and use your spiritual gifts. Go and ask God to give you more spiritual gifts. When you are in the mission field, you would use more spiritual powers. When you witness for Christ, you would need spiritual gifts. When you talk to your friends who does not believe in God, you may need a gift of wisdom to show your friend and that God exists and that God loves him or her and Jesus Christ died for him to save him. When you witness for Christ, the people who are in the jungle say you become a missionary in the jungle, you may need gifts of miracles. Many people in the city also believe in God when they see miracles. When you meet people who are sick, you may need the gift of healing so that people may be healed and come to faith in Christ. Perhaps their relatives would believe in Christ as well. You need spiritual gifts. You see, your students, you may be in the university and your smart classmates and professors argue with you and even mock you because of your faith. You may need the gifts of tongue or combined with the gift of wisdom and they may be astounded and be converted. But all of this, but of all of these spiritual gifts will not be so uh, effective if you do not have love. If spiritual gifts would make you sharp, but using them with love would make you even sharper. So go ahead. Discern spiritual gifts. Use your spiritual gifts. Ask God for more gifts. But you have to develop that spiritual fruits. We have to have love, God's love, because God's love, as demonstrated by Christ, is a more excellent way. Amen? Amen. 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 Love is a more excellent way. Amen.